I have an anniversary coming up. That means I need to make something. So let's get out the shooting board, my favorite plane, and let's write some notes. How many days are in a year? 365. Okay, note number one. Note number 243. Note number 304. Finally, 365 notes. That was more work than I thought. Now let's build something. I don't like writing things. I want to work with wood. <laughs> so we grab some scrap. And I have a lot of really interesting scrap pieces, and I wanted to use them for this box. Took some purple heart, used the uh, kerfing plane to make marks for the saw, then used the Rubo frame saw to cut it all to dimension. This is maple that's working with now. Uh, this piece is also maple. Planing maple and purple heart is actually really easy. You get a really glass smooth surface, as long as your blade is sharp. If the blade isn't sharp, it won't turn out nicely. <laughs> but I think that goes for a lot of things. The Purple Heart was a joy to work with when you really start seeing the color coming out. Now we have to uh, cut everything to its final thickness so that we can use it on slats. Uh, did a lot of book matching in this. Jointing all of the edges so that we can do the glue up. Once all of the sides have been cut, I need to cut the pieces for the top. And the top will be a solid piece of Purple Heart, quarter inch thick. And this will be a book matched 1x4 of Purple Heart. And with resawing this, um, I ended up with a piece of veneer that was about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And so that kind of gives you an idea of how accurate and smooth this saw can cut. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. Planing off all the saw marks getting it smooth and uh, ready to glue together the tops as well. If you ever come across these clamps at a garage sale, um, grab them. They are so much fun to use and they look great on a wall. They take a little bit of finagling to work with, but uh, they're fun. I glued up all the sides and then glued up the tops and got them into uh, final panels. When working with book match pieces, it is always very good to be careful that you're actually gluing together them in a book match form. Uh, that's experience talking. It doesn't come out nice when you spend the time to cut something and uh, then you glue it together wrong. But I was very happy with how these came out. Really nice pieces. Now if you ever want to increase your skill on making a flat board and not dipping off the far side, use a file to hold it in place. It will make you not want to dip your iron into that file. It's uh, also there because my clamp is too small to hold it and I need something a little bit thicker but uh, thinner than the piece I was using. And the file worked. Use a card scraper to bring everything glass smooth. And uh, I, I, I love working with a card scraper. It is an enjoyable tool, gives you a really nice surface, and when you learn to use it, it, uh, it treats you well bring all the box sides to the same thickness at the same depth uh, so that they all work together. Shoot the ends so that they are the exact length that they need to be. That is determined by the cards I had inside. And now we want to dovetail the sides together. I am gang dovetailing these so the two sides are put together. And I don't use any dovetail guides or gauges um, I lay them out by hand. I just say I need a dovetail here, here, and here. I grab the saw and I put it at about that angle and I make my cut. I, I don't mess with it. I don't think about it. I just cut down to the depth um, that it was put on there with a marking gauge. I'll remove the waste with a coping saw. Um, on hardwoods that are like this and this thin, a coping saw I find to be much faster than uh, um, chiseling it out. Then I'll clean them up and bring everything dead onto the edge uh, with a chisel. Transferring the lines from the tailboard to the pinboard 
it is very, very important to be dead on accurate, to not let anything slide, and uh, to give yourself a nice clean mark. Then come back in and uh, cut down to your marking gauge line, remove with the waist, and clean up with the chisel again. Then play around with the fit, make sure that they work well, and voila, you have a dovetail joint. They're really not as hard as people make them out to be. Now to glue it all up, this is when you get to actually see how solid your dovetails are. I use paper on the edges um, to absorb the glue. I'm going to be planing all of the corners down, um, and so I'm not worried about any glue spill out there. Um, on the inside, I just use a straw to remove any squeeze out, any of the little drips that uh, beat up on the inside. The, squat, the screw I can push into the corner and remove all that. After it dries up, I'll take the plane and give it a nice smooth surface, bring all of the dovetail joints nice and flat uh, so that you get that, uh, that really nice look. Then finish it off with a card scraper and give yourself that nice pretty finish. Next up we need to make the bottom for the box. Now I want to take this that I just made and recess it into a groove. So I need to cut a groove all the way around this board for the box to fit into. So I set the box down, traced it out, and now I come in with a chisel and a knife and score or make my stop cut so that the uh, chisel can come in and remove the waste. And each time I do this is about a sixteenth of an inch and then I'll come back in with the knife and score it again, remove more waste, score it again, remove more waste. And I'll test it with the box to make sure I have a good fit. Now, I wanted to put a divider in this box, but I didn't want a full panel. I decided to put in two pegs. So I used a bore to drill the hole and then chisel them square. The pegs, I wanted to have a, uh, a chamfered top, very, very aggressively chamfered top. And so I used a chisel to uh, clean that out. Just did it by hand. Um, and by eye and made the shape I was looking for. Now we can test it all out and make sure that everything fits. The box slides into that groove really nicely. I was very happy with how that came out. Good solid fit. And then those two pegs I can grab and slide into the two holes that I made. So I basically end up with uh, two halves to the box, but with enough space all around it you can still reach all the way down in and grab things. Now I want to do some really heavy chamfers on this, uh, very large um, cut ends, and I wanted to particularly do that on the base and lid. Using the plane, even on the end grain, if you skew it, you can get a nice, uh, nice clean, smooth edge. Now we can clamp it all up, glue it in place, and uh, be ready to finish the top. Very happy with how that came out. But for the top, I wanted to do some carving and in a quarter inch piece of purple heart it's not terribly easy but it's not really hard either. I chose the pattern I wanted, cut it out and used some of the uh, glue stick to stick it down to the wood. And then comes the uh, the fun part. You just used a chisel to go all the way around every single line and basically make a stop cut at the, uh, the angle I'm looking for and where I want it. This uh, took a little bit of time, especially with the, the, the intricate cut on the outside that was uh, a little more detailed than I'm used to. But then I'll bring in a knife and remove everything between all those stop cuts and clean it all out and make it look pretty. Took a little bit of time, but I love it. it that's what makes the box, it's just, it's happy. Now I have the lid, but I want to make a skirt around the lid to hold it onto the top of the box. I grabbed this piece of white oak. Uh, this was actually firewood from my backyard. I made a couple planes out of it and uh, really liked the uh, figuring it provided. So I uh, started cutting into that. Love working with the saw. It's just a joy to use. Now I can dimension everything to the proper thickness and uh, shape it just, uh, just the way I want it. I want a groove running all the way around so that that carved piece can fit into it, but these pieces are so small that uh, I had to tape them down to the deck and uh, use the 
Stanley 55 to cut the groove. The tape holds very well and is uh, very useful. Now to miter all of the corners for the, uh, the top trim, I cut them by eye and then put them on the shooting board to get an exact 45 on them. It gives you a really nice butter smooth joint all the way around. Use the, uh, the tape trick to glue them all together. Just a, a piece of tape at each of the four corners holds them together so you don't have to clamp them as much. Put the, uh, the top into the groove, put the whole thing up, tape it in place, and then make sure it is square and uh, fits the box appropriately. And you got yourself a nice shape. As with the bottom, I wanted to give the top a really solid chamfer so I can uh, skew the plane and uh, cut that in all the way around. Used a shellac finish. On this particular piece, uh, on my box, I like to, to use shellac. It just gives it a little bit more hearty finish than the paste wax. Put in all the cards and give it to her. I hope she likes it. This box was a joy to make and just a lot of fun all the way around. I'm very happy with how it came out and I think she will enjoy it as well. The little details like the dovetail ends and uh, the, the carving and, and things like that just bring everything out. It's a very different project for me, but one I think I'm going to like for a long time. This is a present for my wife for our anniversary. Uh, this year is our 10 year anniversary and I wanted to give her something kind of special. Um, and I was really going back and forth about what am I gonna make uh, until I saw the Woodworking Junkies video on a 360 box. Uh, I'll leave a link to that right over here. And it really kind of inspired me and something to do. So I sat down and wrote out 365 notes. Um, which took a lot longer than I anticipated <laughs> and then needed a box to put them in and I wanted something so that they could be moved from one side to the other or I could add more to it in the future um, and my intention is to eventually add more cards and things like that uh, so this box has enough space for all of that and uh, then I had to figure out okay what am I going to make it out of and uh, well really I had a lot of small pieces but nothing that was enough to make a box um, and so I pulled out some maple scrap some purple heart um, sapili mahogany, ash, um, some white oak with some really nice uh, 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 figuring in it, and just uh, a bunch of things that I, I kind of liked, and I want it to be somewhat busy because of the, the cards I chose were all multicolors, and it made it kind of busy, and I kind of like that style. I like having enough intrigue that you can look at it for a little while and see, still, still see a few new things in it. Um, also, I really wanted to kind of keep with the the uh, angular Celtic feel, um, but bring it kind of modern. And so that's why everything has chamfered corners. Um, I wasn't quite intending to, but it has a slight Japanese feeling with these corners sticking out. Uh, it's more or less my design, my own, uh, <laughs> my own way of doing things. And I, I like it. It's not for everyone, but that's for me. So this is a really fun build for me and uh, something I, I enjoyed. Uh, I know one question I'm going to be getting is how long did this carving take? Um, and this is a little bit smaller than what I normally do. And this took me about six hours to do. Um, well worth it. I'm really happy with how it came out with the, uh, uh, the book matched uh, purple heart. Just brought everything together. And uh, I'm happy with how this came out and I'm hoping that she is too. So. That's about it for today. I hope you really liked this. If you did, please hit the like button or think about subscribing. Feel free to check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like. And until next time, have a wonderful day.